When you deal with horrible web comics on a daily basis, it's nice to once in a while sit down and enjoy a really good web comic. And that is what we're going to do today. We're going to review one of the kings of web comics. We're going to review it. The web comic. You know it. I love it. Here is least I can do. Every webcomic reader worth the grain of salt knows least I can do, written by Ryan Summer and drawn by... Well, that's one of the things that I like about the comic. You can see how it grows as time goes on. It has had three artists, Trevor Adams, Chad W.M. Porter and finally Lada Sosa. And you can really see how the comic has become more mature over time. Even if it's only penis jokes. Least I Could Do is regarded by many readers and writers of webcomics to be a true work of art. And I'm one of them. Why? Well, let's find out and let's begin with the story. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Pull me out Meet Rain Summers. Rain is your run-of-the-mill kind of guy, except he has an uncontrollable libido. So yeah, he's like me. Okay, so he's a very horny guy, but the difference between him and me is that he can control his libido with the help of hot women who want him, while others are forced to use free hentai online. Not that I would know anything about that. Hmm. What? Anyway, the story is pretty basic. The story is simply Rain trying all kinds of stuff to get laid in all kinds of ways and weird stuff that happens in between. Because it is so simple and so well executed, you can easily follow what's going on and want to keep following. Ryan Summer is a great writer because he manages to make jokes on every strip but also have a great variety of storylines and running jokes. He introduces characters in just the right speed for you to not only care about the characters but also be able to know what makes them tick before a new one is introduced. The story also evolves as the characters change, new locations are met and you get sucked more and more into the world of Rain Summers. Also, I don't know if it's just me, but he reminds me an awful lot like Barney Stinson from How I Met Your Mother. I can't believe you're still not wearing a suit! In fact, there's quite a few similarities to How I Met Your Mother. On her answering machine! <laughs> but hey, I love that series. What up? Ryan Summer is an amazing writer, and if you read or made comics, I think you'll hear see why. He keeps the text to a degree. He knows it's a comic, not a novel. Unlike someone else we know. I'm not letting it go. I am not letting it go. Fuck 8-Bit Theatre and all that it stands for. Now, I've tried to actually do some research on Ryan Summer, and all I can tell you is that he is born July the 5th in 1978. He is the vice president, creative director of Blind Ferret Entertainment and owns a comic store in Montreal, Quebec called The Fourth Wall, where every episode Link Cower has ever shot has been on top of. I wonder if they have a lot of burns up there. There is a lot of characters in Least I Can Do and they all have their own personalities that leads to great jokes so forgive me for not going into depths with all of them. Another point in the comic's favor is that it doesn't have my least favorite character matchup. The insanely stupid one and the guy who has to correct him and point out how stupid he is. I mean it's right here in How To Make A Shitty Web Comic. Let me read. Have a stupid character stand next to a normal character to make him seem even stupider in comparison. You're not going to see the cover. You'll just have to trust me on this one. First of all, you got, of course, Rain. Rain would seem at first glance to be an immature bastard, which he kind of is. But he actually has his brain in the right place that scores him a big job. The cool thing is that normally the person who most people like and who comes with the comic relief is a sidekick. But here, it's all Rain. There's one thing that puzzles me about Rain. 
Throughout the comic you get the idea that he's portraying Ryan Summers opinions and thoughts. But then... <laughs> I, I'm sure he had a good reason to say that. <laughs> Other than Rain, we got John. John's a school teacher and the victim to most of Rain's shenanigans. I don't know if it's the hair, his personality, or the fact that I wanted to be a school teacher back in the day as well, but I can really relate to this character. Also there's Mick. Mick is another great proof that Ryan Summer is an excellent writer, because how would you picture a fat guy in a comic? Why, you would of course picture him as a fast food eating, spineless, nerdy doofus with no self esteem and no luck with any kind of human being with a vagina. On a quick note, that's not how I see fat people. I mean, you should see my anyway, let's move! Matter is, Mick is actually pretty cool. And while he does sometimes have a nervous breakdown when meeting women and eat fast food, he is like any other character who just happens to be overweight. Then there's Noel, who's Rain's best friend, and this guy I like. Should I degrade this comic, I'd say that he's the black mage to Rain's warrior. Motherfucker, beat me to the joke! You win this time, you sly bastard. Last there is Issa, and oh my god, if I've ever been wanting Tixel Pities, this is it. This is Rain's only girlfriend, not girlfriend, who puts up with his constant womanizing and sleeping with women. Of course, Rain isn't shy to say he wants to get into her pants too, but she puts up with it, which you gotta love, cause it gives the comic a female point of view. You know about stuff like purses and dresses and... Let's move to the arts. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. As I said before, the art changes as the comic progresses. The same thing happened for Control and Delete, Penny Arcade and Questionable Content and I'm a huge fan of it. My own comic is 5 years old and even though it looks like shit, I keep it as it is so people can see how my art progresses and I probably pick it up from reading least I could do. The first artist is Trevor Adams, who had his own style that was simple and looked like something you'd find at the end of a newspaper. It's not impressive, but it was personal, which is a good thing that a lot of artists these days tend to forget. The problem with the style is that if you didn't see a character from the right angle, you wouldn't know who it was. Next is Chad W. M. Porter, and as much as I hate saying it, He's probably the worst at least I could do has had concerning artists. Not that it's bad at all! But his style seems a lot of copy pasty. Like the only times you get to see Rain or the other characters portraited in a special way is when they're supposed to be portrayed a cool dynamic or something else. But it is good and colorful. Plus, let's face it, Chad knew how to portrait them ladies better than Trevor did. Now for the last and current artist, I want this guy to have my kids. Of course along with Ryan Summers. La de Sosa. While his name is a little weird, his art is amazing. Look at it. Every frame is filled with great backgrounds, great postures, amazing lighting. The characters always interact with things in a realistic way and flashy sound effect. Oh god. It's the Skrunk! If I met Ryan Summers and Lada Sosa, I would get down on one knee and ask them both to marry me. It would be awkward, but I think we could make it work. Wow, there's a lot of awkward pauses in this review. Anyway, let's move on to the final verdict. Least I could do is what I'll be comparing other comics to in the future, which I guess is kind of unfair because it is so great. The story is excellent, it moves at a great pace with a whole lot of jokes in between. Rain and his gangs go from visiting spammers from Nigeria to skydiving and much much more. There are some strips where Noel and Rain are out walking discussing the finer details of life that can seem a little bit boring at times, but for the most part, they are hilarious too. The stories are 9 out of 10. The characters are wonderful. They are a merry bunch, all with their strengths and weaknesses. Many of them disprove their stereotype and shows great writing, and Ryan Summers is still introducing new characters. 10 out of 10, baby. The art is amazing. Lada Sosa, if you're listening to this, which you're probably not, I wanna be like you. Sure, the drawings are a little too western compared to my own style, but I'm not so narrow-minded I can't like other styles. But I have to be fair. 
The comic did have a period with so and so art, so an 8 out of 10 sounds about fair. Finally, the comic lands on a 9 out of 10. I'd say 9.5, but then Angry Joe would probably beat my ass to death. Least I Could Do is one of my all-time favorite webcomics, and for good reasons. It's good for when you're at work, when you're in school, or when you're just sitting at home needing something to do. And if you don't already got a window up here with the least I could do on, something's really wrong with you. I'll see you at the next webcomic relief. Take care. I seriously mean it. Click up there and find the least I could do and read it. Jesus.